Shalom, Ahab, Wa, Baraka. First and foremost, Kahal Allah Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Double honors to the elder apostles and teachers, also the prophets, that um, I study and learn with daily. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today I'm going to do a class called Faith and These End Times. Faith and These End Times. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry. Oh. I already forgot my glasses. That's what I was looking for all day. I haven't found my glasses all day. Hold on. All right, let's get this truth. Okay, let's just open right up to... um. Um, I want to go into the Strongs, even though I'm not a big fan of the Strongs. I'm going to go into, well, you know what, I have my, uh, it'll take me a couple minutes to look it up in the, my, um, my, my actual, I was talking about the, the, the blue letter, but my actual Strongs is, um, It just takes a little while to find stuff with it. So let's go into the um, the blue letter. Um, Romans chapter 15, Strong's Concordance, blue letter. Mm -hmm, Showing it to me. There it is. All right. Romans chapter 15, starting at verse 4. Whosoever, for whatsoever things were written in aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So, um, and what's going on here is that um, all of these scriptures that we have now, they were put here for our faith to help build it. This is part of the building process of your faith. First you hear that you're an Israelite. Then you're like, what? Well, I'm an Israelite. And then you find out what tribe you're from. Man, I came here on a slave ship. You serious? Wow. Then you um, start to read the scriptures deeply. And it, um, let me turn this off. We'll just sweat it out today. It's hot in Tucson, but it ain't hot enough to not bring out this word. So, um, so, um, The, like, like I said, back into uh, the faith. When, when you read the scriptures now, you know who you are. You know what tribe you're, you're from. You know you're an Israelite. You know what tribe you're from. Now you find out that you have to teach. You find out that you have to get rid of all of, of these pagan holidays and start keeping the high holy days, the ordinances. You know, so... That it was all written for our learning sake, so we could move forward as Israelites. That's all there is to it. We we wanted to move forward as Israelites, and so also we learn from the mistakes of our forefathers. So what our mission is as Israelites, honestly, it's to come back to the laws, the statutes within the laws, and the direct commands. You know, to the best of your ability, according to your knowledge, like I always tell you, because 
one person's going to be doing this and another person's going to be doing that. And it just shows that we truly do have a different office. Just as long as we're keeping the laws to the best of our ability, according to our knowledge. That doesn't mean you can go off and say, I'm doing this. No, that just means that you're, that, that you're weak and you have um, no willpower. So that's, that's not what I'm talking about. Not the weak people with no willpower justifying their fucking wickedness. And excuse my French. I was reading some scriptures yesterday, and I actually did find some scriptures that said we, we should try to talk with them without being so um, so um, wicked in our speech, I would have to say. So I'm going to work on mine. Two, so I do, when people say stuff to me, I do look it up, and I do take it seriously. So what our mission is, like I said, is to keep the law, statutes, and the commands to the best of our ability, according to our knowledge, to ultimately get the kingdom. And um, also, everything that was promised to us through our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and through Jacob, because Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. And we know that the promise is through Jacob. So everybody else is going to be mad, and they're going to try and and, and beat that piece of factual information down because they all want to be saved too. So they take what's called the New Testament out of context. Let's keep going though. Let's jump over to the uh, book of Samuel. Let's go to the book of Samuel. First Samuel, I'm sorry. Let's go to the book of First Samuel. And we're going to go to chapter 28. And we're going to start at verse 3. Now Samuel was dead, and all Israel had lament, lamented him. So they were all, they had already, okay, he was dead, and they mourned him. And buried him in Ramah, in even his own city. Even in his own city. So we know that the word even, because I've told you a million times, it means indeed. So indeed, in his own city. Definitely in his own city, in other words. He definitely wanted to, to be buried where he said. So he's definitely born buried in his own city. And Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Remember, it said that thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. I think that's, um, um, uh, it might be Deuteronomy 8, me 18, I'm not sure. Let, let me look it up, but we'll come back to it. We'll come back to it. Thou shalt not suffer, anyway, um, familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Okay? And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all his Israel, uh, gathered all Israel together and they pitched in Geboah. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart grew, greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired Yahweh, Yahweh answered him not, neither by dream, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there is a woman that hath a familiar spirit in Endor. Let's keep going. Saul disguised himself and said unto, uh, and, and I'm sorry, Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and two men with him. And they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee. Divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring me him up, whom I shall name unto thee. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, actually, you know what? Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there for a second. So, it says right here that he said, bring me a familiar spirit. Right? But... Clearly, in verse 3, he had removed, and Saul had put away those that had familiar spirits and wizards out of the land. So, we know that Saul got rid of all the people with familiar spirits. 
And then through his um, lack of faith, he used witchcraft. Because what did he do? After he knew better. He knew better. The Most High did not answer him. So he already knew better than to um, go and to go after the witches. He's the one that put them out of the land because, let's go to it. Let's see if I can find it. I, and I'm, I want to say Deuteronomy 18 and um, 10, I think, but I could be wrong. Let's see. Um, Deuteronomy 18 and 10. There shall be... There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his sons or, or his daughters pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch. Let's get another precept. Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. There it is. Exodus 22. KJV. Let me pull it up. Exodus chapter 22. KJV. And... <clears throat> um, let's go straight to 18 it's just it's straight up the point um, 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 Exodus 22 and 18 thou shalt not suffer a witch to live so he went to a witch when it says if someone's doing witchcraft you should put them to death so Okay. He didn't have faith, though, did he? Where is your faith if you're, um, you got to ask yourself, where is your faith if you're going to witchcraft because the Most High won't answer you? If Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai is not answering your questions, you're doomed. The last thing you want to do is make it even worse, right? Correct? Correct, Amundo? Let's go back in the first Samuel chapter 28. And what we're going to do. Is. Um, I like this. I like this story since he's got the lack of faith. Let's go ahead and keep reading it. So let's go to verse 9. Um. We're going to get a point, I think, it'll probably, I'm just going to read through um, 15, and that's where the point's going to be. So let's go ahead. We'll make some points, and let's just say that. All right, Samuel 28, 9. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul hath done. He took all the witches out of the land. I showed you that in verse 3. And, um, 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 yeah, 28 and 3. You know what Saul hath done. How hath he cut off those who have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land? So it's literally a precept in the same chapter for the first for the for the third verse. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? Why are you setting a trap to set me up so they'll kill me? They'll put me to death. Let's keep going. And Saul swore to her by Yahweh, by Yahweh, by Yahweh, saying, "As Yahweh liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for these thing, for this thing." So he literally told her the. But I'm 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 telling you by the in the name of Yahweh that you can do witchcraft when. This, now you know he's going. Now you know he's off. Now you know he's bugged out. He has zero faith when you tell somebody, "Oh, don't worry, you can break the law and it's all good." Then the woman said, "This is verse 11. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, 
Um, yeah, verse 11. Then said the woman, whom shall bring I up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Saul. Bring me up Saul. So his, he had faith. Where is his faith lie? His faith lies in worldliness and in witchcraft, just like all the people of today. So when you get that MOTB stuck in your forehead or in your hand, remember this. It's the same witchcraft that Saul's using all the way back in the day. You'll figure it out. You'll learn. You'll understand it once you get it, what I'm talking about. For all of my righteous Akiyama brethren, Shalom. Shalom Ahabwa Baraka. We only got a little time left, but let's keep going. Let's keep going. So, he asked for Samuel. Let's go to verse 12. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. Now she knows when she saw Samuel. And the king said unto her, be not afraid. What? For what sawest thou? What did you see? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God descending out of the earth. 14. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. He has, a, he has a jacket on, if you want to know what a mantle is. It's like a cloak. So he's covered in a cloak. I'm just going to call it a, a jacket for you guys that don't understand what a cloak is. It's like the, when you have a jacket with no sleeves and just kind of like drapes right over your shoulders. Anyways. So he, and he was covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stood with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So now he went from worshiping, he's going to doing witchcraft, now he's literally bowing his face down to Saul, like Saul is Yahweh. See, I'm sorry, Samuel. So he's bowing his face down to the ground like Samuel is Yahweh. The thing is, though, is Saul's got his worship in all the wrong places. His lack of faith so far has brought him to um, trying to um, use witchcraft. And then when he sees Saul, he bows his face to the ground like Saul's God. So then he starts worshiping Saul. And how do I know he's worshiping Saul? Because he bowed himself. He put his face to the ground. Verse 15. And Saul said to and Samuel said to Saul. Why hast thou disquieted me? Why have you taken me out of my rest to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God is departed from me. Yahweh has left the building. He is no longer a part of Saul's temple, and he answereth me no more. Neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore I have called out, I have called thee, that thou mayest make known unto me what I shall do. So, this is how prideful this guy is. This is how prideful people get in, in their um, worldliness. They're going to wake somebody up that's already been put to rest and try and put them back to work. He's literally at rest. He's like, oh no, I need you to get up and do a few more things. You need to do a few more things. And so, huh, I like this. This is my most favorite part of this story. Then said Samuel, wherefore then dost thou ask me, I'm sorry, ask of me, seeing Yahweh hath departed from thee and is become thine enemy. Why are you coming to get me when when my dude hates you, you're trying to get me away. Am I going to come and be a mediator in between you guys? You got to be joking. And you know what? I always used to tell this to people. Like when you go outside and you burn in the sun. And then I say, 
I say, I, I, um, I was, I would always say, if the sun hates you, what does that have to, what is that, <laughs> what does that say about your relationship with Yahweh? <laughs> I don't know why that means, it has nothing to do with this, but it just made me think about it because wherefore then dost thou ask of me, seeing that Yahweh hates you and has departed from thee and has become thine enemy? Hey man, this dude hates you and you're going to ask me for help? You got to be joking. You've got to be joking. Is he joking? I don't think he's joking, though. He's really going for it. So, um, let's go, um, <laughs> so he was lacking faith. He was lacking faith, okay? And if you sin, Yahweh is your enemy, for Yahweh hateth sinners, right? Yahweh hateth sinners. Help not a sinner. So, um, And like I said, um, if you sin, Yahweh is your enemy. So um, let's get um, let's jump around a little bit. Let's jump around. Let's go over to the Book of Deuteronomy, chapter twenty-eight and fifteen. Because man, this guy broke a lot of laws, and just one little tiny story right there. Just a little, just a little piece of his life story. He went out and just destroyed his life, it seemed like, because we all know if you knowingly break the laws, the Most High is not going to deal with you the same anymore. But Deuteronomy 28 and 15, Because it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, to observe and do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee, and overtake thee. Oof. Um, let's get one more. Let's get one more person. Sirach, chapter 12, KJV. Sirach, chapter 12, and... Eight. Let's see. For the Most High hateth sinners, and he will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. So when you paraphrase, it just doesn't have the same power as the real scripture. So when I said the Most High hateth sinners... I'm just barely giving you a chip off the, the just a barely, just a little scrape off the iceberg there. So let me read it again. Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. For the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, hateth sinners. And he will repay vengeance to the unrighteous, the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. He's going to beat them. He's going to beat him into powder. He's going to beat him into powder. Okay? Give unto the good and help not the sinner. So now that we know that, let's go back to the, um, to the, um, 1 Samuel. And chapter 28. And we're going to read down some more. Mm, because thou... Oh... We're dry. Where were we at? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep reading from where I left off. So I'm going to go back to 16 and just read down. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then dost thou ask me, ask of me, seeing... Yahweh departed from thee and is become thine enemy. And Yahweh hath done to him as he spake by me. For Yahweh hath rent the kingdom out of thy hand and given it to thy neighbor indeed or even to David. So, hmm. 
He's saying that the Lord hath taken the kingdom from the hand of Saul and put it in his neighbor's hand, who is his brother, and who is his brother? David. Okay, let's keep going. Because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, and what did I already showed you in Deuteronomy 20 and 15, I showed you in Sirach 12 and 6 and 7, so because thou obeyest not the voice of Yahweh, nor executest his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Uh-oh! Did you hear that, guys? He said he didn't ex 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 executed his fierce wrath upon the small hats, upon the Khazars, upon the Ish Jews, the Ish, the Ish, the Ish. Therefore hath Yahweh done this thing unto thee this day. Now what is he going to do for Saul's lack of faith? That's why I'm going to name this class. Saul's lack of faith. Saul's lack of faith. <laughs> Let's go ahead and read verse 19. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Yashar, Allah, with thee into the hands of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me. Honestly, I don't know how sad you should be about that. You get to go be with the Most High, but you do got to face judgment. That could hurt. That could hurt. Let me finish the verse. Yahweh also shall deliver the lost of Yashar Allah into the hand of the Philistine. I'm sorry, the, the, the host, not the lost. I, I'm, I apologize. Let me read it again. Starting from the top, 1 Samuel 28 and 19. Moreover, Yahweh will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shall thou and thy sons be with me. The, I'm sorry, Yahweh also shall deliver the host of Yashar Allah into the hands of the Philistines. So, the whole army and all the people are going into captivity because of Saul's sin against Yahweh. Verse 19. I'm sorry, I just read verse 19. So, everyone became accountable. Verse 20. And Saul fell straight away along... I'm sorry... Saul fell straightway all along the earth and was sore afraid because the words of Sam, of Samuel. And there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all day, nor all night. So he was, how would you say, destroyed. He was completely spiritually, mentally, and physically physically destroyed inside. There was nothing that could stop what was going to happen to him, and he knew it. It's like that flash right before you get into a horrific car accident, and it was because it was all your fault. Well, Saul was looking at the headlights of a car coming in to destroy everything. You know, I hate to use the car metaphor, but he <coughs> it's just some things that happen sometimes. So, um, I want to get maybe, um, one more precept, I think. I want to see if it, it matches up, and then, um, I'm going to start shutting it down. I just want to get a quick, quick class out for the Shabbat. This, this class is called, um, Saul's Lack of Faith. So, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. And go to chapter 33, and let's see what we got. Um, uh, um, trying to figure out where to start. Jeez. Uh, 
Oh man, this is just, I gotta do a whole class on this. Okay, there we go. We're gonna have to, man, we're gonna have to read a lot of this Ezekiel before I, I can then. I'm gonna close out, I'm just gonna, because like what, 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 what this is gonna um, come down to is that this is gonna be our problem today. We have no faith. We would go to witchcraft. We'll go to divining spirits. We'll worship idols. We'll do anything but do what the Most High told us to. So, and that, that's what this is pretty much going to get into. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and um, shut it down after this. So Ezekiel chapter 33, and we're going to start at verse 23. And, I'm sorry, verse, yeah, 33 and 23. Then the word of Yahweh came upon me, saying, Son of man, they that inhabit those wastes of the land of Israel speak, saying, Abraham was one, and he inherited the land, but we are many. The land is given us for an inheritance. We got to start right there. We got to start right there. We have to bring, we have to say something about that. So, already you can see it right now. Israel standing up. And they're trying to tell us, oh, that's in the past. That was Abraham's land. He already had it. It's over. He was just one person. But the inheritance, he inherited the land. So, one, there was just, just one person and that's all over. But we are many. We outnumber the sand. We're, we're the sand of the sea. We're the sand of the sea. And we are many. The land is given us for inheritance. We are all the descendants of, through A Abraham, Isaac, through the seed of Jacob. Let's keep going. Wherefore, this is verse 25. Wherefore say unto them, Thus saith Yahweh, Ye eat with the blood, and lift up your eyes towards your idols, and shed blood. And shall ye possess the land? So he's saying, what? This is your land? <laughs> you fucking... I'm sorry, my bad. You worship false gods. You worship false gods. And you, you fight each other. You kill each other. You, you worship false gods and that's what causes all the fighting and the bloodshed and you guys don't even realize pulling yourselves away from the truth is what causes everything bad to happen and then you think you're going to possess the land i know the lord the lord knows my spirit he really does know your spirit and it's it's very wicked and so you're going to have to deal with that when it comes to the judgment let me keep going verse 26 Ye stand upon your own sword, ye work abomination, and ye defile every one his neighbor's wife, and ye, and shall ye possess the land? Ooh. You're, you're, you, you stand on your own sword. You're, you're out there living by the sword. You live, you live by fighting everything off and destroying everything. Let's get some, um, Let's go to the Strongs. Let's go to the Strongs. Let's not, let's not hold out. Let's get the Strongs. Let's get that Strongs in there. So, um, um, let's see. And you stand upon your sword. You work abomination. And you defile everyone his neighbor's wife and shall ye possess the land hmm no how would you it's just like when your parents tell you that they're going to give you a um a treat or a surprise or a reward your parents are going to reward you for your good works but then you just go out and you're bad the whole time and and this is it. And shall you possess the land? So shall you be rewarded? No, you're probably going to whoop your butt. 
They're going to give you a little spanky spank until you go stand in the corner or whatever they do to discipline you. Right now, the Most High is taking us. He's going to start giving us horrific deaths. I saw a woman. I've seen so many horrific deaths in the last year. It's, it kind of takes me back. I mean, things that shouldn't ever happen we're hearing happen. Just things that shouldn't ever happen. And so he's saying, you work abomination, you stand upon your sword, you, you defile everyone, and you, you defile everyone's wife, and shall you possess the land? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Verse 27, say, bow thus unto them, thus saith, Yahweh, as I live, surely they that are in the wastes shall fall by the sword. What did I just tell you? Horrific death. And him that is in the open field will give, will I give to the beast. How many people have you been heard this year getting mauled by wild animals? Straight up. Straight up. To be devoured. I will give the to the beast to be devoured. Who? The man, him and him that is in the open field, will I give to the beast to be devoured. Are you telling me we haven't seen some horrific deaths? I mean, even the orcas, I even put a video, they're out disabling yachts. And they're training their children to do the same thing, to keep all of these rich elites with their big, giant super yachts out of the water. They're kicking them out of the water. Straight up, they're kicking them out of the water. So let's keep going. Um, and they that be in forts and in caves shall die of pestilence. You're going to catch a disease. You're going to be all... So everybody that's in a, in a FEMA camp, that's in a fort... Or they're stuck in a cave. The, all you elites underground, you're, both of you are getting diseases. And both of you are dying. That horrific death too. Um, this is all your lack of faith. Just I'm telling you, this is all class about faith right now. But see, if you don't understand faith, it's, it's, it's because you're out lifting up your eyes towards your idols. And you're shedding blood. And you're um, defiling your neighbor's wife. That's why. But let's keep going. Verse 28. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease. He's going to take away our power. Where, when he says um, her pomp, he's talking about Israel. And the mountains of Israel. See, I mean, I need to finish the verse sometimes so you guys will know. For I will lay the land most desolate, and the pomp of her strength shall cease, and the mountains of Israel shall be desolate, and none shall pass through. It's going to destroy the nation of Israel. He's going to destroy the people. They're no longer going to be in the land. The land is desolate because there's no Israelites there anymore. Let's keep going. Verse 29. Then shall they know that I am Yahweh when I have laid the land most desolate because of all their abominations which they have committed. We can go back to Deuteronomy 28 and 15 and it says to keep the laws. So what is the things that they're mainly doing? What are the things that these people are mainly doing that is getting Yahweh's attention? He, they're Bloodshed, um, 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 fornication, what is it called? Um, adultery, bloodshed, adultery, um, false idol worship, killing your own people, committing adultery with your own people, worshiping the other people's gods. So, So what, what, what were, because of all the abominations which they have committed, adultery, false god worship or idol worship, bloodshed. One other abomination that I just can't leave out. 
the devouring of pork. Man, you guys love them unclean foods, and it's just disgusting. The smell of it, everything. It makes you stink when you sweat. But So these were the abominations which they have committed. I got a couple more verses. I'm going to close it out. Um, we're going to have ourselves in class. So, Ezekiel 33 and 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people are still, still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the house and, and spake one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from Yahweh. And they came unto thee as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but will not do them. Because you guys don't have no faith. That's like, I love, I, wait, let me keep going. Let me, let me finish the verse. For with their mouth they shew much love, but with their hearts goeth after their covetousness. Man, you know we've got a precept on that. But you guys understand if you have any type of eyes to see and ears to hear, you should re I mean eyes to see and ears to hear, like I said, yeah. You should really have an understanding. Let's read it again. They come unto thee as the people cometh. And that goes for you camps too. You're just Christians dressed up in costumes. Costume Christians. You ain't still you still ain't keeping the laws. You still ain't doing what the scriptures say. But now you've got a small understanding because you're in these camps that bring out 50% truth. So what happens when you're see, I'm gonna I don't like to call it 50% truth anymore. I'm gonna say you're lying half the time you speak. Half the words that come out of your mouth are a lie. You're a liar. One bad apple ruins the whole bunch. So they come unto you as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as thy people, and they hear thy words, but they will not do them. <laughs> For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. So I'm going to get, um, I got to get a couple more. I just got two. Let's get it. And then, um, and then we'll, then we'll stop right there. We'll stop after this. Let's get this. Um, and this is the same with, um, Saul too. Saul is not separated from this crowd right here. This is all about what he, how he felt. And so you guys are just doing the same thing today as he was doing back then. Let's go to the book of Mark. Chapter 4. And I'm going to close out here. i got to shut it down before my battery dies. I think it's going to die. Um, let's start at... Um... Let's let's go. Let's start. At, um, let's start at fourteen. The sower soweth the word. Okay, that's that's us, the prophets. We tell you guys what the Bible truly says. But now we listen carefully. First, the, like I was telling you, that they hear the word, but they don't do them right. This is Mark four and fifteen, and these are they by the wayside where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Okay, so. Bam! You got already, if thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation, uh, pursuant to um, Sirach 2 and 1. So Satan's going to come immediately once that word starts coming out. Let's keep going. This is why you're going to hear the words and you're not going to do them. Okay? And these are they that are likewise, which are the, and these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with joy and gladness, and have no root in themselves, and to in, so endure, but for a time afterwards, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So when they find out you have to do some work, or you find out that people are going to fuck with, I'm sorry, that people are going to um, mess with you, that they're going to give you a rough time, for um, keeping these laws, then then you're you're like, oh man, I can't go through all this, and you're you're offended by it, you're mad about it, you don't want to do it anymore. You didn't realize it was going to be this tough. It says though, and, and 
He that endureth until the end, that same soul shall be saved. I think that's Matthew uh, 24 and 13 or 24 and 24. I don't know. But anyway, I'll find it later. But so they're offended. You've got to endure. So what the point is, is you have to endure until the end. You ain't getting saved just for doing nothing. Um, yeah, 24 and 24. No, 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 that's not it. It's 13, like I said. So Matthew 24 and 13. But he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. So these people hear that there's persecution. And for the word's sake, they're immediately like, nope, I ain't doing this. But so you're not enduring until then you're not going to be saved. You immediately took your hands off the plow, which you are no longer worthy of the kingdom of heaven. Mark 4 and 18. And these are they which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word. Oh, man, this is like everybody. This is everybody right here. Mark 4 and 19. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things enter in and, and choke enter in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. So this is everybody right now. This is everybody. They hear the word, it chokes it right out of them. Because once you hear the word, you start to understand it, you're like, but wait a second. So this month, the Sabbath is on Thursday to Friday night. So, but, so, so next month, you're telling me I can't go out on Friday night because it's on Friday to Saturday? So they hear the things like the lusts of other things entering in. I want to go out. I want to party. I want to do this. I want to do that. This is, this, is, this is having a negative effect on my worldly life. I want to braid my hair. I want to dye my hair. I want to wear short shorts. I want to wear mini skirts. I want to put on a bunch of makeup. I want to be a girl when I'm a guy. I want to be a guy when I'm a girl. I want to do all these worldly things. Plus, there ain't no money in this. There ain't no money in following with this, this Bible. So the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful. So they're, they're, they're literally offended. Like, man, I can't do this. I can't believe they even showed me this. You're, you're mad when you hear the truth again. And you know why? Because you were never chosen in the first place. Many are called, but few are chosen. Now, with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and close out right there. Let's go ahead and get Revelation 22 and 7. I'm going to bust this one out all month. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. In other words, don't let the, the, the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things choke this word out of you. Don't let the word get choked out of you. Because the only people that are getting blessed are the ones that keep the sayings of the prophecy of this book. The only ones that are getting blessed are the ones that, 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 listen to this, 14. The only ones that are getting blessed are they that do his commandments. Revelation 22 and 14, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. Jumping backwards, 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. To give every man according to his work shall be. Don't let this world and the riches and the lust of this world choke the truth out of you. Because you will end up without. Revelation 22 and 15. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. If you are caught with these people... The Most High is going to destroy you. He is literally going to put you into destruction. You've got to understand this. I was going to close out right there, but I got one more. Because, like I said, if you're, if you're going to let the world choke this word out of you, if you're not going to have faith, if you're going to fall into the same category as Saul, 
Isaiah chapter 66 and 15. Like I said, if you let the once you once you take your hands off the plow, you're no longer the word of the kingdom of heaven. The word if the world can choke the word out of you and you're offended by the word, it's unfruitful. You become chaff. You become you become tear. So the tear is going to be bundled up and what? Put in the fire, right? The wheat is taken into the barn, safely put in a good, safe place. But let's go back to these tares, because they're going to get bundled up. In Isaiah 66 and 15, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots, and like a whirlwind, to render his anger with fury, and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword will Yahweh plead with all flesh, and the slain of Yahweh shall be many. So he, if you let this world choke the word out of you, if you, in other words, if if you if you lose your faith in the truth, and we're in the last seconds of the last of the end times, we're about to see something in our lifetime that no one's ever seen in any type of history ever. So please, when I tell you guys, and I go off and I'm cursing and jumping up and down. I've prophesied for years now, but the only reason why is to help wake up the one-third and the 144,000 elect within that one-third. So I'm praying for you guys every day. And with that being said, if you've got those spiritual eyes to see and the spiritual ears to hear the truth when it comes out, I pray that you got something out of this message and it was um, exhorting. It was um, encouraging to you. Also... Double honors to the elders, the, the elder apostles, the prophets, and the teachers that, that I have. I've learned so much from GMS in the last three years, and I've been studying alone for over 10. And I got to a point where I wasn't getting anywhere. And, that, and then I, um, I started studying, see, like, with, um, um, I might want to buy about three or four years ago. And then um, I learned a lot. So double honors to, to all of the elder apostles that are bringing out the 100% truth that take time out of every day to make sure we're edified. And with that being said, shalom.